Welcome to Voices of CFMA, Construction Financial Management Association's podcast, featuring conversations with our members. I'm your host, Kate Platt, CFMA's Marketing Coordinator. This month, I'm joined by Senior Tax Manager at Crow LLP and the current Crow Fellow for the CEO Action for Racial Equity. He's a CPA and CCIFP out of Grand Rapids, Michigan and a member of the Western Michigan chapter. Welcome, Victor Sturgis. Hi, how are you? Doing good, thanks for having me, Kate. Happy to be here. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's get into this. So let's just start at the top. How did you get into this line of work? Well, so, you know, my my background is is coming from public accounting. And, you know, the the question being, how did I get into accounting is 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 a fun one and, and, kind of a painful one to start with since my, my very first accounting class that I took in college, uh, which I went to the University of Michigan, I'll throw a go blue out there. Uh, my, my very first accounting course that I took, I actually ended up getting a D. Um, and at that point, didn't really think that accounting was the path that I was going to take. Um, but I did need to retake the accounting course in order to apply for the uh, my undergraduate in business administration. And so, I ended up retaking the accounting course with a different professor. And I don't know what it was about the professor, but something about the way that he explained the concepts and the math behind uh, the, the accounting um, rules that are out there just, just clicked with me. And from that point, you know, I of course did really well in that class and decided that I want, wanted to uh, go and get my master's degree in accounting. Um, and so that's that's really how I ended up in the profession, you know, based on you know one individual really who who really kind of took me under his wing and and helped me get to the understanding that I needed to get to and a lot of the concepts to to bring me to where I am today. So, because of you know his great leadership and his ability to mentor you and really reframe this accounting class into terms that you understand, is that something that you take with you today when you look for a mentor? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think one one thing that you recognize when you think about uh, kind of that natural um, organic mentorship that's out there, it's typically someone who, you know, you you, you think the same with, right? You, you click with, you have the same perspective. And it's really easy for you to understand each other and learn from each other and grow from each other, right? I say each other because I, I think most mentorship relationships should be a two-way street. Um, and so I, I think that being able to connect with someone in that way makes that mentorship relationship just, just easier and more or- organic. But I will caution folks when they're thinking about you know, reaching out to potential mentors or folks who are reach, reaching out to potential mentees, you know, don't limit yourself to people who think like you, look like you, act like you. Think about also finding mentors who have a different perspective. You know, those aren't as easy to find. And you have to go into that relationship understanding that there is going to be, you know, some conflict and some friction with the way that you see the world. But that is a great thing to have, especially in a mentor. Or, or a mentee, right? You're thinking about something from a perspective that you, you maybe didn't have before. And that just makes you a, a more well, well-rounded and better person overall. I mean, it's so similar to me where I had to sit in a, an international relations course, mm-hmm. didn't understand a thing of it, mm-hmm. walked into office hours and the professor was like, hey, what works for you? And I said, hockey. And she retaught her entire lesson. Wow. Using hockey as an allegory for international relations. And like wow. that, totally understood it. So I, <laughs> I get what you're saying when it comes to finding that person who speaks your language, who can really take you to a new level um, yeah. when it comes to finding a mentor. And That's- I remember her looking at me going, I've never tried to describe the Middle Eastern conflict using hockey using hockey i'm not sure anyone has <laughs> <laughs> you know that's amazing that's amazing <laughs> but you know when you find the right person when you find that right mentor 
suddenly it all falls into place, but you're absolutely right. And finding someone who's going to challenge you Mm -hmm. and force you to think in a different way. And that also leads to growth. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And I've, I've been lucky enough in, in my career to have some great mentors and some great coaches that fall on both sides of that aisle, right? Those that, that are natural and those that I conflict with a little bit, but it's all helped make me a better person. That's, that's all a mentorship should really do at this point, right? Mm-hmm, exactly. So tell us about uh, the favorite, a favorite project that you've worked on. Uh, at any point in your career that you look back on and say, wow, I can't believe I got to be a part of this. Sure. Yeah. And and this this question is actually kind of part two to the, the first question of how I got into, you know, this industry, specifically more on the construction side. So, you know, in, in my first year uh, working at, at Crow, um, I actually had uh, this project actually kind of get dropped on my desk as as one of my colleagues was leaving the firm. And it, and it turned out to be a, a massive, you know, Excel model that our firm has been using for our construction clients for, for quite a while, right? I think even since the late 80s, we had been using that same model. Um, and obviously Excel had progressed and changed, but for the most part, the concepts of that model were the same. So, you know, looking at what, it, what essentially was a giant workbook or a giant spreadsheet in Excel, um, I had to figure out exactly how this massive calculation was working. Um, and so what I ended up doing was taking out a piece of paper um, and drawing with, with boxes and circles, kind of a diagram, a flow chart of the breakdown of how this calculation was working. And the, ca- the calculation was, was basically the tax calculation for recognizing income for long-term contracts, right? For construction contractors. And through that process, I developed a really thorough understanding of the concept that we were trying to go after as, as a, you know, accounting firm and as, you know, serving our clients in that area. And, you know, that actually, strangely enough, provided me the opportunity because of that understanding and because of, of me t- kind of taking grasp of that and taking hold of that and saying, hey, if this is my project, I want to make sure I fully understand what's happening. Um, because of that, I was actually a part of the process and eventually became what we call a, a product owner of uh, software that, that I helped create, you know, with the help of the development team at Crow um, that was formerly called Percentage of Completion Manager. Um, but we have recently switched the name of that product to Crow Construction Contract Analyzer. So that's something that's in the market right now, and it helps companies calculate and see some benefit from the tax side of their long-term contracts on their tax returns each year. So all the way from the beginning, and that was back in 2012, to what it is now, I actually have in my cubicle in my office, which I haven't been in my office in a while, but the cubicle in my office, I, I have pinned on the on the wall that piece of paper that's written in pencil that has all of the the boxes and the circles and the the diagram and then right next to it i actually did a more formal computer generated diagram of that calculation right next to it in my cubicle so seeing the difference from the very beginning to where we are now with the software itself is amazing and so that's been an amazing project for me to be a part of and i think the reason i was able to do that um, and hopefully I'm not getting into the, the next question here that you have, but I think the reason that I was able to do that is because at, at a certain point, you know, I coming up, coming up on the, on the tax side of things, I realized that me being honest with myself, I told myself, I'm not sure if I can see myself doing tax compliance, you know, the process of doing tax returns uh, for our clients, which there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But for me, I'm like, I don't know that I can see myself doing that when I'm when I'm 50 years or 60 years old, nearing retirement, still doing tax returns. That was not something for me. And so I was able to luckily sit down with with my boss at the time, who's also one of my one of my amazing mentors and say to her, um, you know, I'm not sure that um, I can do taxes for the rest of my life. What other options are there? What other things are there? And um, I'll throw her name out there, Rhonda Houston. She's a partner at Crow. Um, you know, she, she said, you have clearly taken hold 
of this percentage of completion calculation. I don't think I've ever seen anyone diagram out what this calculation is like you have over the years that she was at Crow. And she's like, you clearly have a good understanding of what this is. We are thinking about making that, that Excel calculation into software. Would you like to be a part of that team? Right. And that that led to me then kind of leading the team in the development and then being the product owner of the product as it's in the market today. That is that's an amazing journey over the course of eight years from mm -hmm. a pencil drawing to something that you can literally go out and buy now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been it's been a very um, a fun process and a learning process. And you, you just never know what you're going to get any day in, in, in the software world, right? Something, something's always changing, something's always happening. So it's always good. All I can say is congratulations on that <laughs> accomplishment. Thank you. Thank you. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? So, you know, the, the best piece of advice that I've gotten really comes from my mother. Um, and that, and it's and it's something that it's, it's not something that she she gave me once, but it's something that is con she constantly reminds me of, whenever I have a conversation with her about getting some work done or making a decision, and that that piece of advice is simply do you, right? You you have to be authentic um, with yourself. You have to be honest with yourself whenever you're thinking about trying to make a decision in life. When you're thinking about making a decision in your career. Just be honest with yourself about it. And, and you'll, you'll end up in the right spot, really. I, I think a lot of people call it just following your heart, right? And so just do what's authentic to you. And that's something that I try to um, instill when I, in my coaching relationships with my coaches that I have. Hey, let's make sure that we're, we're staying in line with what you want and what you expect out of your career, what you want in, and what you expect out of your life, right? do you and then everything else will really fall into place and i think that you know the reason that i that i mentioned that it, I mean, we maybe touched on it a little bit earlier is because when i when i thought about having that conversation with rhonda and being honest with myself about maybe not doing taxes when i'm when i'm 50 years old that's that's me being honest hey i have a great job i have a great career path and i'm i'm about to blow that up potentially, right, by going to my boss and saying, hey, I don't think I can do this for the rest of my career. Um, and so just just being authentic and being true uh, and doing me kind of got me to the position of, of building the software that's out in the market today and having the opportunities I have right now. Really, truly taking control of your career. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So because you you've managed to to wrangle this and make your career into what you want it to be. Um, at the top of this, I did introduce you with two job titles. Mm -hmm. Can you please elaborate a little bit on your work as a fellow, what this means and the work that you're doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. So, so not too long ago, kind of out of the blue, I was approached by, you know, my firm's leadership to represent Crow as, you know, what's called a CEO for Action for Racial Equity Fellow. Um, and that is actually a part of the CEO Action for uh, Diversity and Inclusion Coalition. So that coalition created a fellowship that really consists of all of the companies who are part of the coalition have the opportunity to provide resources in the form of people as fellows to fight for uh, racial equity across our country, both in public policy and law and within our company's policies, right? So our, our main goal is to create sustainable um, policies and sustainable frameworks that are gonna fight racial inequities that we see across this country right now. And so the CEO Action Coalition really decided on moving forward with the fellowship with everything that, that happened earlier here in, in 2020 um, with the civil unrest that we saw. And, and it felt like as a business community, we could be doing more. We could be putting more resources behind it. Um, and there are a lot of companies and organizations and associations that are part of the CEO Action Coalition. Um, and um, it's been so far, we started October 1st. It's been an amazing opportunity, amazing journey, some amazing talented people that are a part of the fellowship right now. You know, right now, I think we have about 250 fellows that started. 
Um, and so we're all from all across the country, you know, working via Zoom in our current COVID environment uh, and really looking for and coming up with ideas and, and figuring out how to execute upon those ideas uh, to fight racial inequities in the country. And so being able to, you know, have my company support me and stepping out of the realm of, of what I did every day and generating revenue for the company into, you know, this role as a fellow, uh, having impact outside of Crow. Obviously, this impacts the communities we serve, but it also just impacts our country as a whole and our society as a whole is an absolutely amazing opportunity. Um, and I am so grateful for the chance to be able to impact change in our world. That is a great undertaking. And it's awesome that you're getting to participate in something not only, as you mentioned, that affects the local business, but also as a as a country as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that and I think that that goes back to the point I was making earlier a little bit too about, you know, doing you and, and taking it a hold of your career. One thing that I'll add to that with this is that, you know, I never thought that this opportunity would, would land on my desk. I mean, it, it, it came out of nowhere based on the circumstances and based on the situations that our society is in right now, right? So that's the other piece of advice that I'd give is just leave yourself open. Um, leave yourself open to those opportunities. I know that it, it's important to be, to be loyal to, to folks who have, have treated you well and, and things that have treated you well, but at the same time, you know, if you have the potential to bring value um, in other areas and other aspects that are true to you, you should do that. Because ultimately that's gonna put you and whatever organization or whatever group or even society as a whole in a better position if, if people are doing what they love to do. Uh, because typically when you, do, when you do something you love to do, you're really good at it, so. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us and having a, a chat about your career and the work that you've done and the work that you're continuing to do. Is there anything else you wanted to add on before we wrap up here? Yeah, you know, I just wanted to make sure that I added that, you know, CFMA as an organization and CFMA as a West Michigan chapter that I'm a part of has been absolutely amazing. You know, starting as a part of the organization, I think in 2013 or 2014, the people and you know the pretty much everyone I meet you know from a local chapter standpoint even to to Kate you and the team at the national level as a part of CFMA have been amazing so you know if, if you have folks listening who maybe are a little timid and getting more involved please do so trust me it will be worth it um, it's been a great organization and I'm happy to be a part of it well, thank you so much for the kind words. And Victor, we are so appreciative of all the work that you've done for us. There's, we, CFMA doesn't exist without people like you. So thank you. Thanks for listening. If you're interested in learning more about CFMA's stance on racism and construction, check out www.cfma.org forward slash racism and construction. Next month, we're joined by Jen Hobb to discuss her career and plans for the 2021 Annual Conference and Exhibition.